Hi, everyone, and welcome to our, our aromatherapy workshop, Emotional Well-Being, Blocking the Paths that Lead to Anxiety. We're so happy and excited to be here with you. Um, so today we have Angela Rodriguez. So Angela Rodriguez is a professional just consultant, and with all of her talents and abilities, he helped, she has helped all of our consultant community. So let's say hi to Angela. Welcome her to this Thank workshop. You. She's going to be giving us um, all of the tips that we have been learning so far. Hi, Angela. Hi, thank you, Cynthia. Hello, everybody. Um, so we are going to be talking about a very special emotional wellness topic today that is very near and dear to me. Uh, <laughs> I, I personally deal with this topic. This is a big reason why I use used products and they make a world of difference in um, my well-being throughout the day. And um, so I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks with you for how can we use aromatherapy to deal with this issue. So um, this is an issue that we're talking about today that has become, it's not a new, it's not a new issue, but it's become kind of more important in these past four to five years or so, where we are talking a lot about anxiety. There have been global changes, there have been lifestyle changes that have affected a lot of people. Um, and we're seeing kind of more of a focus on how do we deal with uh, healthy ways to deal with our emotions, to take a moment to feel them, to process them, um, so that they don't build up and create those larger sensations like anxiety. So um, hopefully I'll be able to give you lots of quick and simple tools using aromatherapy to help deal with anxiety. And our topic today is, let me share my screen with you quickly here. Share screen. Um, is emotional wellness halting the paths that lead to anxiety, right? So anxiety is a very complex topic, right? It is a it is something that can be caused by multiple factors. Um, some people have just moments of anxiety that, you know, a little bit of aromatherapy, a little exercise, healthy activities can really make a big difference for them. Some people have more chronic conditions with anxiety and, and seek help with medical professionals. It's a very complex topic. So today we are talking about the complementary aspect of complementary ther therapies using aromatherapy to help with this, right? So just remember as people are reaching out to you as consultants, those of you who are connected as consultants, um, and to those of you who are customers, this is something that complements medical advice, med you know, consulting with your physician if you are feeling like this is an issue for someone um, in your own life in or you know someone else that you know. So just please be aware of of that as we go through and feel free to pop questions in the chat. Um, I will answer as many as I can. And if I can't, we will definitely get back to you soon. Cynthia will have a record of all of that. Um, so we'd be happy to help you with whatever you need. So let's see. All right. So, um, you know, today, you know, nowadays we've talked about how we've had some lifestyle changes and um, we have a very fast paced life here in the United States, right? Like we have a fast paced life. We have a demanding work schedule in almost all places. Um, some of us are, you know, you could be a full-time parent, you could be a full-time worker, you could do both of those things. Um, we have a lot going on, right? And it can be really hard to prioritize things and kind of make time to deal with all the emotions that come along with modern day life. Um, so a lot of times that can lead to anxiety in a lot of individuals. And anxiety isn't always a bad thing, right? It's it's a normal reaction to our basic emotions for a lot of us, and it can actually serve a purpose in our life, right? So anxiety is something that can result from different emotions that we have when we're sometimes not really able to process them fully, right? Um, so think about it as our basic emotions that we have in response to our environment, right? They're innate. It is not something that we plan. It is not something that's different across cultures. Like if I am traveling in Mexico, for example, and I smile at someone, they're probably going to smile back. Or if I'm at a concert or a, maybe I'm, I'm watching a comedian and the audience around me starts to laugh, I'm probably going to start to laugh too. And I'm not even thinking about it. Our body is kind of hardwired for certain things. So a lot of us, if you look at like the, the images that are on our slide, right? If you, a lot of us, if you express an emotion, you can see it on your face and that's kind of universal, right? Throughout, like it's for most people, it's going to look the same. So it's something that's really, our emotions are something that's really built into us. Um, it's just an innate part of being a human being, right? 
Um, some emotions are kind of labeled as positive or negative. Some help us feel better, some make us feel worse, but they are just a part of normal life. Some of our emotions actually help us with survival, right? Like fear, um, you know, that, that urge to run away from something dangerous, et cetera. A lot of our emotions are helping us survive. They're helping us connect with other people. They're helping us to separate ourselves from situations that aren't good for us, et cetera. So we, they really have an important purpose in our life. They do also have a lot of physiological effects, right? Think about when something makes you super happy, you kind of feel light and floating. If something has you very tense, you might get pain. Maybe you get, I have a really bad pain right here right now. I should probably look into that. Right? So like you get tense, right? You get tense. You might feel pain in your jaw, in your head, in your neck. Like we have, you might get butterflies or a stomach ache if you're getting nervous, things like that. So you can you think of emotions as something that's going on in your head, but it does have an effect on the rest of our body as well. They are considered universal. So, um, you know, everyone is a little bit different, but if you go to another country, usually you can see like by someone's facial expression, if they're angry, if they're sad, if they're happy, it's considered pretty universal. It's not something that we're necessarily taught. Um, they do help us modulate our behavior, right? So um, based on how we feel or how we make others feel, we kind of use that to judge our behavior and modify our actions. And they're very complex. They're very complex and they can vary in intensity depending on different factors, mostly on individual factors of who we are, what's our personality like, how have we grown up, what are the what is our toolkit for dealing with them, et cetera, and also culture, right? Um, in some cultures, it's normal to express your emotions really freely and some you're not allowed to do such things. So um, there's a lot of different factors that come with just like where we grew up, how we were raised, um, and that changes how we deal with emotions and express them. Okay, so our a lot of our basic emotions have to do with when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're afraid, when we're angry, we might be upset or surprised. Those are kind of the key basic emotions, right? Um, so think about times when you, maybe you've gone through all of these in one day sometimes. I feel like adulthood is a little bit like that. But think about all the times that you have this shift in emotion throughout the day. And then just take a moment to reflect how often do you actually get to pause life for a moment and process. Why am I feeling so sad right now? Why did I just get so angry, right? Um, what Something's making me upset. I feel kind of tense and jittery. Why am I upset? And like how often during our fast paced life do we actually get to take that little time out, that little pause and consider what is going on with our mind and our body and our emotions. Um, so what happens in this fast paced life of ours is we need to learn these tools um, to deal with these emotions. We don't want to suppress them. We don't want to package them up in a box and send them away. We want to give ourselves special little moments where we can sit with them, we can identify them, we can process them, and we can let them flow through us so that they don't get stuck because that is a huge factor in people dealing with anxiety is that those emotions kind of get stuck and in our body really reacts to that, right? Um, so aromatherapy is a key tool in this toolbox that I'm talking about for giving yourself that special moment, setting up the special habit to identify, like to take a moment, to take a time out, a pause, to identify, to process, and to let those emotions flow through you, to express them um, in a healthy and natural way. So a lot of times people will ask, okay, so aromatherapy, that's just like stuff that smells nice, right? Like, so how does that work? Um, how... How is that going to actually help me feel better when I'm dealing with these big emotions like anxiety, right? Um, and that's a common question for us in the uh, aromatherapy essential oil world, right? So this is actually, there's a lot of science behind how it works um, because aromas are going to go into our brain and help send messages to the rest of our body. That is huge, right? So think of it as um, when we have aromatic molecules in the air, in the environment, right? Like with a diffuser or you open up a bottle of essential oil and you're breathing it in. When those molecules are in the air, they're going to stimulate the olfactory bulb in our nose. That is going to travel as a nervous impulse to the limbic system. It's going to travel to the cerebral cortex where our thoughts and kind of main processing take place. Um, and they're going to release neurotransmitters and hormones that are going to then affect what is going on with the rest of our body, right? So just by smelling these aromatic molecules from our essential oils in a purposeful way, um, we are 
telling our brain like, hey, this, something's going on. We need you to send out some messages, right? So that is very helpful in itself. Um, so let's talk about that, that first. So this is the arom aromatic molecules in the air. If you are having a moment, yes, let's say... Hmm. I'm about to go into the super, into the, into the I'm sorry, supermarket, in, into the store with my three-year-old, now four-year-old, she just turned four. Um, and I know that that's maybe going to be a stressful endeavor and I need to get it together. I'm going to do some really quick, simple aromatherapy to get my brain ready and say like, get grounded, let go of your stress, get ready for this, right? We can do this friend. Um, so I'm going to do something really simple and do this with me. If you have, if you have your set, your workshop, you know, mine is all falling down. Um, if you have your workshop set with you, go ahead and take out something like Harmony or any other bottle of essential oil that you have. It's fine. Something that brings you back down to earth and keeps you grounded and calm. So I'm going to take out Harmony. And we're going to do just something really simple by getting these molecules into the air, stimulating that olfactory bulb and getting those messages sent to our brain like, all right, it's time to chill. Okay. So all we're going to do, how easy is this? We're going to uncap our bottle. We're not going to stick our nose right in this. If you are familiar with use products, you know that they are very concentrated. You don't need high, you don't need big amounts of them. Like a little bit is going to go a long way, especially with Harmony because it smells so, it's so great, right? It's a really like potent aroma that's going to like get in there right away. So all you're going to do is open up your oil, hold it in front of you, but not like right at your nose, right? And you just have to take your hand. It's like magic, like, it, it's just going to, the molecules are already coming out of the bottle and just breathe it in. You didn't have to set up a diffuser. You didn't have to apply a special blend. You just literally took out your essential oil and started breathing it in. Now there's another trick to this. If you just take one little breath, it might not really help as much, but try to take three deep breaths. When I say deep breaths, and that means like with your diaphragm, go ahead and put, let's see, if you can see me here, go ahead and put your hand on, like right below your rib cage. You know, like where your diaphragm is, it kind of like sits just below your rib cage, right? So go ahead and put your stomach right there, like kind of in between your ribs or your hand there on your stomach in between your ribs and breathe in through your nose. And you should feel that that big, deep breath is pushing out on your hand with your diaphragm. So breathe in, breathe out. Another one. You've probably seen people, sometimes people put their hand on their chest and on their diaphragm to make sure their chest is coming up and their diaphragm is pushing out. One more. Three deep breaths is like this magical number, right? That can really help your brain start to reset and process what is going on around you. And those aro the aroma from your essential oil blend is going to start sending messages into your brain to relax. This is something so easy to teach your customers or your friends, those of you who are, who are customers, um, so that they have a quick resource for when they know they're going into a stressful situation that might cause them some anxiety, like me in the grocery store with my toddler, right? So, um, so this is something really easy because it doesn't require a lot of planning or a lot of tools. You can just grab it and turn that into a habit really easily. But let us know in the chat if this is something you already do on a regular basis. If you're like, or if you're like, oh yeah, I never thought of how easy that is to just breathe in right from the bottle. Yeah, we want anxiety and emotional wellness remedies to be quick and simple because if we're in need of emotional wellness care our brain is not really in a place to be doing a lot of setup and things like that so we want something simple and quick that's going to help us feel better right away yeah so that's our first tip in the toolkit is know your essential oils that help you get into the brain space where you need to be we'll be talking about that in a little bit in a little bit and getting into the habit of taking them out and breathing them in Quick note as we're on this slide still, remember that as your used oils come in, you know, you get your new shipment in, make sure you keep these little boxes because you can keep your bottles in there for storage as well. We do have amber colored bottles to protect your oils from sunlight, from light, which is going to make them evaporate faster, right? So you wanna keep them protected from light, but they're even more protected inside our little boxes. This is nice because a lot of times we need these visible so that we can see them and build those habits, right? If I put this away in a closet or a drawer, I am probably going to forget that it exists and I'm not going to use it very often to help myself feel better. So if I have this in the box, I can leave it on my kitchen counter. I can leave it, right? Like somewhere on my desk, I can leave 
leave it somewhere visible so that I remember to keep building this habit of taking good care of myself and sending those messages to my brain as it needs it. Okay. Any questions, go ahead and let us know. And please do let us know if, let us know in the chat, if this is something that you already do, I'd love to hear from you. Okay. So super quick aromatherapy 101, right? And with those deep di diaphragm breaths is going to make a really big difference. Okay. So we've already talked about these first few steps. Now that is, that is what happens with our brain when the aroma is in the air. Now, what happens when we put these aromatic molecules on our skin, right? A lot of times you will see your used consultant applying on these energy points, right? Like on the temples, behind the ears, nape of neck, inside their wrists, um, and they're going to they're going to rub and they're going to breathe in. Right. We're going to put it a lot of times we're putting it on these key points where we get great absorption of our oils. That is because when we put these molecules on our skin, they penetrate our little capillaries are going to like bring them in and they're going to penetrate the deeper layers of our skin. They're going to travel through our bloodstream and they're going to reach target or, or tr reach target organs where they're going to be sending out those messages for like what should be happening with our body right a lot of times we're using this to um like relax tension in different areas so that our body relaxes whether it's for de-stressing maybe we have sore muscles things like that but this this is a really great way to get a quick penetration into the body and send those messages. You'll notice that your central, your central oil consultant, right? Your use consultant is usually going to do both of these things. They're usually going to apply to energy points if they can. And they're usually going to rub to activate the aroma. And they're going to take those three deep breaths. Like this is, that's all, that's like, that's like aromatherapy 101. All right. So that's a great habit to have um, for yourself and just to know why we use essential oils for so many of these emotional things is because they just, they go in through our nose, through our bloodstream and send messages to our brain and body to help moderate some of these big emotions and other things that happen with our body throughout the day. Okay. So today we are obviously focusing on anxiety with aromatherapy. So what is anxiety? Um, tell me in the chat, one word, the first word that comes to your, to your mind, right. That comes to mind when you're thinking about anxiety. Let's do a quick, Brainstorm in the chat. Stress. I see stress. What else do we, what else makes us think, or what else do we think of when we think of anxiety? Stress and what else? Get those fingers ready. I think about breath. <laughs> That's the thing that comes to my mind first, because when I have anxiety, my heart starts to beat fast and I feel short of breath. Those are like my main those are like my main symptoms. So I have to start taking big, deep breaths. I get my, my aroma therapy out and I start doing things to calm down. Right. All right. Go ahead and let me know in the chat. What are the first ideas that come to mind when you think of anxiety? All right. So anxiety is a, our body's natural reaction to perceiving a danger. Okay. It responds to unforeseen phenomena. Oh, I don't know what's going to happen here. I'm feeling anxious about it because I have to be extra alert and aware for what to do with that. Um, it, there's a physiological and an emotional component. So you will often notice that if you are feeling anxious, if you have that anxiety, it's going to be, yes, you feel the emotion, but it's going to make your heart beat faster. You'll feel that your chest gets a little heavy. You might sweat. You might, right? Like there's a lot of physical things that go along with having anxiety. It increases the sensitivity of all of our senses. So if you know someone who is anxious, they might be extra sensitive to bright light, to loud noises, to chaotic background noise and movement, things like that. So if you or someone you know has anxiety, you might notice that they get very sensitive to these things sometimes. And it's because, and our nervous system is moving into this state of alert, like, oh my gosh, something might happen, get ready, right? Um, and so all of our senses are just hyperactivated. And if we're like that chronically with anxiety all the time, that can be exhausting for the senses, right? Um, however, anxiety actually serves a purpose, right? It's not there just to bother us or like, you know, for us to make fun of in movies or something like, like it's a real it's a real thing for a lot of people, but the reason why we have it is because it increases our efficiency and our performance, right? Like think about you when you were in school and you had a test the next day, well, you needed a little bit of anxiety to feel that motivation to study and prepare and get ready for it, right? Um, that anxiety of a deadline that is approaching 
often gets you working faster because that anxiety like boosts your whole body up and says, oh, we got to go, we got to go, we go. Like some people get addicted to that and become procrastinators, right? So anxiety does serve this purpose of making us more responsible, more efficient. It, it can improve our performance in small doses, right? We all need a little bit of anxiety in our lives in small doses to get things done and to be responsible people, right? But if we if we have anxiety all the time and we can't get like a result from it, like if I having a little bit of anxiety because I have a test tomorrow, I show up, I take my test, I get a result from it. Yes, I studied hard and I got a good grade. That then kind of closes down my anxiety and says, yes, you did it. We got our result. And then I go back into my normal life, right? But for some people that cycle gets stuck and they don't get, they don't have anxiety for a purpose that gets them a result and then it goes away and then it comes back in little bits. Like sometimes it's just a lot of anxiety, right? That is not getting processed. It's not flowing through. Um, it's not giving them results and it can kind of get stagnant and can really feel like garbage, right? Like it, like if you or someone that you know goes goes through that and has chronic anxiety, it is not a great thing. Um, it is, it makes it hard to enjoy a lot of different things in life um, and can be affected by a lot of things in our environment. For example, we have all these sources of anxiety, like um, we have fast paced routines, especially in the United States. We are very efficient, fast paced around here, um, current lifestyle. So there's a lot of social media access right now for people. You can kind of get stuck in a rabbit hole on screens where, you know, like that can all increase anxiety. Um, and by just being more kind of a technological society right now, people are doing less things with connecting with nature, getting outside, being active, and that can really affect things as well. Um, a lot of us have very big stress loads and we live in a place that kind of thrives on stress and anxiety for success. So we have to be very conscientious of that. Um, work exhaustion, sensory overload. <laughs> this, this makes me think of teachers, parents, um, people working in the medical field where there's like so much noise and movement and people and right. Like, um, your senses, if your senses can be overwhelmed, right. And so that can cause anxiety and it can be caused by anxiety, right? If you have anxiety, those senses are extra sensitive you're hyper alert to them. And then it just is like a really bad cycle of too much stuff coming in all at once. Um, and so we really have to be aware of those factors and try to separate us, separate ourselves from them when necessary. Yes. And there's also a lot of physical symptoms that you will notice. Um, and I'm going to kind of share some examples of essential oils that we can use if someone is presenting anxiety with some of these symptoms that could be helpful. So if you have your note, if you have your notes ready, I'm going to give you a few tips that can go along with this. Um, and then we will be making um, like a, a special blend based on what you or someone you know needs to learn how to do with these different essential oils. Okay. So think of it as, um, anxiety triggers a lot of what ifs, right? So like, what if this happens and what if, oh my gosh, what if this happens? What if I mess this up? Right. So it can be kind of a cyclical thought disaster, right? So, um, so some physical things that we will notice is a fast heart rate because your body is getting into this alert mode, thinking that something's going to happen, right? So if you have someone that they have, oh, my heart's beating really fast, um, that I think that's related to my anxiety, you might want to recommend they try Harmony, like we just did with our quick um, with our quick aromatherapy, just by opening that bottle and wafting the aromas to your nose, um, that's going to help them come back to the present, right? So aromatherapy is great for that because it interacts with so many of our senses. Um, but it's going to help bring us back to the, the present and feel more grounded and start processing, like, why is my heart beating so fast? What is making me so nervous, right? Um, if you have someone who says that they tend to have that sensation of shortness of breath, um, where they're breathing okay, their heart rate, they, their pulse is actually fine, like physical, physiologically, they're okay, but their chest feels heavy and they feel like they can't breathe. This is a very common thing with little kids um, and with adults. So if they're saying that you might want to um, also give them something like three mint blend um, to kind of refresh. <laughs> And it feels like it feels so cool and refreshing as they breathe it in. It actually does help them feel like they're getting deeper breaths in, right? Um, if you have someone who is complaining of, oh, I feel really anxious and I have 
um, my muscles are aching or I feel like I'm kind of shaking, like sometimes I can get kind of tremors, then it would be a good idea to recommend that they try rosemary. So rosemary is really helpful for relaxing muscles. So besides its emotional benefits, it's helpful for relaxing muscles. So by creating a blend with rosemary, it's going to help emotionally for them to relax and feel um, more prepared for difficult situations, but it's also going to help calm their muscles down when they feel kind of twitchy or tense, okay? Um, if you have someone complaining of cold sweats, right, this is like high anxiety, right? Like cold sweats, um, that's a physical reaction, but again, I would recommend harmony so that they start feeling more grounded and back to, back to earth, ready to process what's going on. If they complain of tingling in their extremities, maybe their hands or their feet, and it's from a anxious reaction, they need calm. So some um, let's see, did I grab, so lemon and bergamot would be good oils to recommend for them because it's going to uplift and help them feel more ready to take on whatever they're facing. Um, but it's also going to help have more positive thoughts, right? So these aren't like normally relaxing oils. These are stimulating oils, but what they do is help us feel more positive and inspired. So if we get into those not so fun, anxious, cyclical thoughts, these are going to help boost our mood and stay more positive. Okay. Um, if you know someone who is complaining of insomnia, gardenia nights, this is one that's great for like applying on your energy points, but also on the soles of your feet and up and down the sides of your Achilles tendon. Um, that one is really helpful for slowing our brain a little bit. So it's going to help those GABA receptors do their job better, tell our brain to start slowing down. Hey, it's time to sleep and we can get a better night's rest. Change in appetite kind of looks different in different ways. So sometimes it's, they don't feel like eating. Sometimes you get, you get people who get anxious and they feel kind of nauseous. If that's the case, have them um, use peppermint or three mint blend to help deal with that feeling of nausea and in, improve their appetite. Or if you have someone who, <laughs> this is kind of my case, is like, if I get anxious, I want to snack on things because it's like a movement that keeps my body moving. <laughs> um, and so if you have people who are overeating, then you would probably want to recommend something like bergamot and lemon to kind of break that cycle and come back into more positive thoughts. Okay. Um, and let's see, you might have people too, who say things like they get a knot in their stomach. You could try chamomile for that, but also it's usually another lemon and bergamot situation where they need to feel more positive that everything's going to be okay. This is a great blend for that. Um, or dizziness. I like our 31 herbal oil for that, or any of our mint peppermint or three mint blend would be great for that sense of dizziness as well. Um, so most importantly, like these are things that people don't always know are related to anxiety. So having that conversation of like, are you feeling anxious right now? Are you, have you been feeling anxious? This, this often is presenting itself because of our emotions. So take a look at this list, um, and decide what are some things that either you have experienced or someone you have been talking with recently have experienced and try to pick out some of those oils that would best fit that situation. So I'm going to do an example for you because because we're going to do a little bit of a of a project here, right? So um for example, when I have bad anxiety, my heart rate goes by goes fast and I feel that sensation of shortness of breath. I do have asthma, but it's not because of asthma, it's from anxiety, right? So those are my main two um stressors. So that means that I want to make my blend with harmony and three mint or peppermint um, is what I'm going to combine for my blend. Let me know in the chat if you didn't get something written down. Um, but if you have someone who is who struggles with muscle tension and tremors, add rosemary to your blend. Um, if they need that positive thoughts for you know um, tingling and things like that, try bergamot and or lemon in your blend. So grab two or three different essential oils that you would like to use in this next activity, okay? Let me know in the chat if you have questions. Looks like it is up and running. It's just a little quiet, folks. Okay, so here we go. Um, so we're going to use, for this activity, we're going to use our Aroma Blends Body Mist and those two or three, if you want, two um, essential oils that most um, help with the sensations that you feel with anxiety. 
So this is the perfect carrier because it's helpful for creating an ambiance. We have that instantaneous effect. We can create our body mist and just spray it in the air. We can take it along with us. We can apply it to our body because this is a carrier that's going to dilute our oils to be applied right on our skin. Um, you can use your favorite oils or you can make personalized blends based on your emotional needs at that time. And anytime we create an aroma blends mist, with our essential oils, we are reconnecting our brain with positive emotions. And that is really, really important for dealing with anxiety, right? So we're going to do a little bit of a demonstration. Um, like I said, go ahead and grab your body mist, your Aroma Blends body mist. Um, it comes with these two little 10 mil bottles. So if you wanna grab one of those, let's see, I have one empty. All right, um, go ahead and grab one of those and then your two essential oils. And I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Okay. Are we good? Okay. So, um, we're going to take our empty aroma blends bottle and we're going to make a mist that we can carry around with us and take anywhere or anytime we start feeling these things. Like I said, aromatherapy for anxiety has to be quick and it has to be easy. So this is the perfect tool. Um, I have these little mini, these little mini funnels. You don't really need it because the space is pretty big. But I want you to take your oils that you chose and we're going to add um, six drops total to our bottle. So if you have two different oils, like I said, I'm going to do Harmony and Three Mints. Go ahead and get your oils ready. Try to keep your, make sure you keep your caps separate so that they are not getting mixed up because that could affect your aroma overall. So just make sure you keep your caps with the correct bottle. And I want you to take your Aroma Blends bottle and do three drops of your first oil. I'm doing Harmony. Remember, we hold our bottle at a diagonal and we tap the bottom to get a more precise drop. So one, two, three. Oh, mine got stuck. Okay, three. And then we're going to grab our second oil. I have Mint. And I'm going to do one, two, three. Okay. We always want to put our oils in first when making an Aroma aroma blends mist because there's a couple of reasons. We don't want it to overflow. If we put our mist in first and then the oils, we might overflow and get it too full, right? And we also are going to have a better mixture by putting the oils in first and putting the rest of the, the liquid on top because it's going to help start mixing the two together right away. So I'm going to take my aroma blends mist and we're going to fill up our bottle before we do this. Make sure you're not filling it all the way to the top. Like right here where your bottle starts to curve, that's like your, your fill line, right? So right where it starts to curve, fill it just to there and go ahead and do that. We wanna leave room, we wanna leave an air bubble for mixing purposes, but also to fit that cover in there because it has multiple pieces that just need a little space, okay? So make sure you're not overfilling it, leave that a solid air bubble right where the bottle starts to curve up so that you have room to mix, I'm going to put my cap on. Now you might see some people give it a vigorous shake. You can also do, this is like what, if you get your nails done, right? Like they, they mix it by rubbing it between your hands. You can rub it between your hands. You can, you can do this as well. It just takes a little bit longer, but give it a good mix to incorporate those oils, blend them together, and then go ahead and give it a test spray and see if you like the aroma that you've created. Again, this is a carrier, so it can go right on your skin. Oh, yeah, I like that. Um, and you can spray it in your car, in your room, on your clothes, on your bedding, wherever you need to, to um, help with those sensations that you get, those physiological sensations that you get with anxiety. Okay, any questions about how to put that blend together? Go ahead and let me know. Oh, I see a question in the chat. Where can we buy those bottles? So when you buy the Aroma Blends Body Mist, whether it's in this Aroma Blends full set or in one of our other sets or by itself, it comes with two of these bottles. And I usually, for me, two is usually enough because, you know, when you make one of these, it lasts about a month, you know, if you're using it regularly. And then you just, I usually give mine like a quick rinse, let it dry and use it again for my next blend. So you get two of these with your Aroma Blends uh, body mist, they come automatically. And if you do buy extra ones online or anything, if you want more, just make sure you always buy amber colored so that um, they're protecting your oil blend from the light. Okay, good question. Okay, so that is our 
mist, super easy to make six drops of essential oils. You can decide how you put them together with your, the, and then you fill the rest of your bottle up to that little point um, with your body mist, give it a shake and you're ready to go. Okay. And again, super easy to grab and go and have with you in any time that you're feeling those symptoms. And then we also have a lot of cognitive symptoms that go that come along with anxiety. So um, a lot of times we have catastrophic thoughts like, oh my gosh, this is a disaster. I feel like my brain does this a lot. Um, so maybe you have a presentation tomorrow and you get a breakout or something, right? Like you get a blemish on your face and it's really noticeable. Ah, it's the end of the world. Like we start getting these big catastrophic thoughts. Um, reoccurring fears. Oh, what if this happens? Oh, I bet this is going to happen, right? Like we start getting afraid of all the things, all the what ifs that are out there. Um, we start anticipating physical symptoms. Oh, my stomach is going to start to hurt um, or my neck is going to be sore. Like we start anticipating what's going to happen with that. We might have difficulties with attention, memory, concentration. A lot of essential oils will come in with those things. Um, and we have that sense of loss of control, right? Like things start feeling just like everything is a mess. We can't get life in order. And that can be very frustrating. So we're going to practice um, another quick trip or trick that you can do with some of our different essential oil blend roll-ons. I'm going to demonstrate with SOS motivation, but if you're going to bed soon, you can also use gardenia nights, depending on the time of day, right? Like SOS motivation is kind of good to help us feel, feel like confident, calm, cool, collected. So it's not going to like get you all buzzed up, but um, gardenia nights would be best if you're going to bed after this, right? So we're going to use these roll-ons with a little bit of acupuncture points to just kind of activate some points in our body that are connected to the rest of our tissues um, that are going to give us a sensation that improves the effects of just our aromatherapy, right? So instead, when we're doing these acupuncture spots, oh, here, let me share with you again, resume share. Okay. Um, you'll see on my screen kind of where these points are. We, we are working around the eyes. So we don't want a lot of oil. Okay. The point is having a little bit of oil and the pressure on those points. And that's, what's going to help us feel better. So do a little practice round on the top of your hands. We're not rolling our roll on. I know it's called a roll on, but just press, right? Just press. We're not going to do it. You, if your roll on isn't really getting any oil out, give it a little give it a little movement so it's ready to go, but you're going to just press, okay? Because we don't wanna overdo it, we're gonna be working around the eye area and that can be a sensitive, a sensitive area. So our first point we're gonna start with is we're going to come up to the top of our head, the highest point of our head, which means go like from your ears and pretend you're drawing a headband up to the top. Do you feel that top point of your head? Take your roll on and give it a little push right there, boop, yeah? Now go to where your hairline starts right here at the top of your forehead and give it a little pressure, okay? Come down in between your eyebrows. Again, small amount of oil because we are near our eyes. Go to each of your temples. And again, just apply that pressure to those points with your roll on. Go to the nape of your neck. Now, I know that's a big area, right? Go to your neck, like where you have that little indent. Think about like where I always carry a lot of tension right here. There's a little indent right here. And that's my point. So I'm going to take my roll on and press in that point. And then the last one, I'm going to remove my earrings for this. The last one, you can do this behind your ears if you don't want to do it right on your earlobes. But you can press right onto your earlobes, like as if you're putting in an earring. And that's another acupuncture an acupressure point, right? So by using this roll on, this is like the perfect size to put pressure on those points. And you're getting the added bonus of the aromas put right onto your skin, absorbing into your bloodstream to help increase those effects. So use that with your roll ons, whether it's anti-stress, SOS motivation, gardenia nights, just remember to use a small amount of your oils instead of rolling in a big circle. Yeah. Okay. So those are some quick acupuncture um, like pressure points, right, that you can press with your roll on to help um, kind of increase the effects as you're applying them. Yeah. Go ahead and let us know in the chat if this is something you've already done before or if you have any questions about that.
All right, and then um, kind of to wrap up with our effects of anxiety, it does create a lot of behavioral effects that you will notice with people. They might just wanna stay at home. They don't feel up for going out and doing anything anymore. Um, they might avoid crowded places because of that sensory overload. They just, they can't handle all the noise and movement and people. Um, they might avoid personal relationships with people. They're not reaching out. Um, they're kind of secluded, like, oh, I'll just handle this and hold it all in myself. Um, or they might start seeking a sense of control. A lot of times, people will start to feel like they have to control everything so that all those factors that create their anxiety aren't creating more anxiety. Um, but since the world doesn't really revolve around us, we don't get to decide all the things that happen. A lot of people get, they really suffer from that sense of loss of control um, and can get mad or they can feel irritable. Um, so if you do notice this, I feel like this is a big this is a big thing with anxiety is feeling the need to control things that are not always controllable. So if you have someone who you're chatting with and who mentions that, um, do recommend that they try including harmony in their space and their diffuser, or they can apply it as well with like a carrier in our mist. <laughs> Excuse me. Or bergamot and lemon too can be helpful with that as well. Um, I use so many different essential oils to deal with that because that is just like built into my personality and it comes along with anxiety. So um, I definitely, definitely do recommend things like that from this essential oil set that we have for this workshop are going to, they're going to help a lot with those sensations. Okay. All right. And then another thing that we can do to help ourselves or people around us who suffer from anxiety is help them set aside time to actually take the moments and sit with their emotions they have to take the moment to sit with their emotions, identify them. They can sit with them for a little bit. There's no need to package them up and ship them off right away, right? Um, but then aromatherapy is really, really helpful in helping those emotions become more fluid, flow through, and not get stuck, right? We're we're much better at expressing them when they can flow more, more fluidly through us. So it, when you or someone you know needs this, recommend going into a quiet, comfortable space in sitting in a comfortable chair, armchair. Maybe they want to lay on a yoga mat or on a fleece blanket. Um, dim the lighting to reduce some of that sensory overload. Light colored walls, again, for sensory purposes. Um, soft music, etc. And either have them spray their mist that you've had them make into the air or on the, on the fabrics in their space. It works so well because this mist really nice and light so it stays in the air for a long time. Um, have them mist their aroma into the air or show them how to set up a quick pebble diffuser. Again, I love all of our diffusers, but sometimes when you are in a you're in a mood, you need a little help quickly and easily. And our pebble diffuser is great because it's personalized for your own little space but you don't even have to add water to it. How easy is that? So our pebble diffuser just twists off you charge it for two hours and it lasts for eight hours. Like it's amazing. Um, it comes with these little washable, reusable pads and you just put your essential oil right on there. I'm going to do, I'm going to do a harmony. I'm really digging harmony. I haven't put this one in my kitchen. It used to be my kitchen oil and I haven't put it in there for a while. It's coming back out. Okay. So we're going to put about three to four drops. Some people put more, but it, it lasts a really long time. You line up, but there's lines on the side of it. There's a line telling you where to connect it. Oh, right here. There's a line telling you where to connect it and then where to close it. And you give it a twist and you'll see a little light will come on right here. That means it's on. So it's already diffusing right out of this little space. And it smells like you can smell it like it's coming out of a full blown diffuser, right? So this is something that's really handy for just creating a quick moment wherever you are, taking along in the car, putting it on your desk at work. Um, I put these in my bathrooms when I have guests coming over because they don't need cords. I just I just have them like charged up and ready to go. So um, it's really easy. And again, simple tools to feel better right away in that moment. If you have people in your life that suffer from anxiety, make them do these things because they might be in, ang in an anxious state and aren't doing it for themselves, right? And when we get into this, this environment, we have our aromatherapy going, whether it's a spray, whether we've applied it, whether it's in our diffuser. And we have the right ambient set up for our sensory experience. We put our hand on our chest and our diaphragm and take those three deep breaths. Right? You take a minute, 
as long as that minute needs to be um, to, to process those emotions and let them flow through. This is a huge thing. If you have teenagers in your life, oh my gosh, teach them this right now. They need a big tool and <laughs> big toolkit to deal with this, right? So go ahead and play around with blends. But this aromatherapy set that we're talking about with this workshop comes with harmony, works great by itself. Um, you could do bergamot, three mint, mint um, lemon, lemon, rosemary, like all of these are going to be great for uplifting your mood and helping you feel better. Okay. Um, do we have any questions right now? Go ahead and pop them in the chat. We are almost wrapping up here. So um, if you ha do have a question, make sure you pop it in the chat before we are finished. I'm going to take a quick drink. Okay, it looks like we're doing all right for now. Yeah. Okay. So so definitely use these three different tricks that we've talked about so that your customer base or your friends and family have these easy tools. Get a great essential oil that you love and that brings you peace. Open it up and just waft the aroma to you. Take those three deep breaths. That's one quick trip. Quick tip. Buy the Aroma Blends Carrier and create personal sprays based on what you need at that time. You can spray them on your body, in the air. Super easy to use. Or this pebble diffuser is really, really helpful as well um, so that you can have personalized aromatherapy right in your space. Um, we have our roll-ons, which are great for applying to those energy points, but also for the acupuncture points that I just showed you if you want to kind of activate all those connected tissues in your body. We also, if you're looking at the aromatherapy set that comes with this, um, this workshop, it comes with this little car diffuser which has those same little reusable um, pads. So you don't need water or anything. You can, and you just set it on your, you click it on your vent. Can you see it? And it puts the aroma right into your car. These work really well. Um, even with just like the air being on in your car. So do you see how that works? It's a good size. Or, um, and the kit also comes with a little pin that it's great for like a lanyard um, at work so that you can keep your aromatherapy right on you especially because the workplace is hard because not everyone loves aromas, right? Like they're kind of personal. So it's nice to have something small on you that you can smell and take those three deep breaths as needed. Okay, so um, hopefully you have gotten lots of tips that you can go out and share with the world because we know that a lot of people are dealing with anxiety and a lot of people want to kind of cut it off before it gets to be a chronic condition that can really affect their lives, right? So um, so hopefully you have a good toolbox that you can go out and share with lots of informed, healthy, easy ideas for dealing with that stress and all those other big factors that can lead to anxiety. And just a couple of reminders. Anxiety is a normal state of the human psyche. However, it can if it continues for an extended period of time, it can lead to anxiety disorders, right? That actually like really inhibit how we can live our life. So there's anxiety attacks, panic attacks, agoraphobia, um, generalized anxiety disorder, things like that. These disorders must be treated by specialists. We are not trying to treat anxiety. We are trying to help complement, right, all these different tools so that those moments of anxiety can, we can work through them. Um, but, you know, sometimes we need a little bit of extra help. So please just make sure that you have that in mind whenever giving um, recommendations to people. Aromatherapy is really helpful, even in cases of anxiety disorders, but it should always be a part of a conversation with that person's physician in case um, they are um, taking medications and things like that. It's always good to talk with their physician first before they start incorporating aromatherapy. Um, I see a question, where can we get the slides from the presentation? I know we will have a recording available, um, but Na Natalia, we will get back to you. Um, I do have them, so I can I can make sure, say so to Cynthia, gets up to you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, I'll let say so to Cynthia pop on in case they want to add anything else. Um, I think they had some special announcements for you as well. I think so I can't hear it. I can't hear them yet, but maybe they're yes. yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay, sounds good. Yes, it's just taking a minute to come through. Yeah. Um, right, I'm gonna stop is... share. There we go. Okay. 